When you declare a method, you give it certain specific attributes by which it can be identified. You give it a name, a return data type, a list of argument types, and a list of exceptions that could be thrown. The method can be identified by its name and its list of argument types. The return data type is usually not involved, and the exceptions thrown are never involved. Here, let me show you. Now this class has three methods and they all have the same name so they overload one another. The thing that makes these different are the arguments. This first method returns an int and throws an exception. It requires just the one string argument. This second one has the same name and it also returns an int and throws the same exception. The thing that makes it different is that it requires an int as a second value as an argument. That's the only difference in the method declaration, but that's enough for the compiler to be able to tell them apart. And this method has the same name. Now it returns a double and it doesn't throw an exception. But those two things have nothing to do with the overloading. The thing that differentiates this method from the previous two is the argument. This method only requires an int as its argument, and it's the only one that does that. Java uses only the method name and a list of argument types to match up a method for overloading. After that match is made, it will check that the exceptions are handled and decide what to do with the return value. You've got to be very careful about which data types you choose. For example, if you have a method that accepts a double as an argument and you override it with a method that accepts an int, you'll need to make sure that you set your types so you call the right one. Without the method being overloaded, Java would simply widen the int value to a double and call the other method. There's no ambiguity here. The arguments will be widened to fit if it's necessary and if it's possible, but you can fool yourself if you don't watch out. Now the return value comes into play when overriding a method. Here you see that the method of the subclass has overridden the one in the superclass. To do this, it has the same name, the same set of arguments passed to it, and the same return type. That is, for overriding, the return type has become a part of the name. Any thrown exceptions can simply be ignored. One other thing has to do with access. Here, the method in the superclass has its access set to protected, and it's overridden in the subclass to become public. And this works. You can make a method more public when you override it, but you cannot make it more private. For example, you can't override a public method with one that's protected. One nice thing about these rules is they're enforced by the compiler. If you get it wrong, you get an error message and the class won't compile. But watch that name. If the name is different, nothing is overloaded or overridden and you get no error messages.